team defending against P.J. Hall. He obviously wasn't quite as efficient from the field. Just what you like about the defense? Game? Well, I, I, I liked how um, what we did defensively as a team. I thought in the first half uh, we defended and, and then we kept fouling. We put them on a the free throw line 15 times in the first half, and I, I felt like in, in the first half that was their number one and most efficient way to score. Second half, we did much the same things, um, but we um, we defended without fouling. And that put us, with the exception of the first two possessions, that put us in a position to box out and rebound. And I thought we did a fantastic job. It's the third straight game, you know, I've talked about defense and rebounding. Defense and rebounding is the third straight game that, that we've played really good defense and we have out-rebounded our opponent. What about the perimeter defense on Gerard and, yeah. and the whole team? But they, they only hit one and their previous low was six. No, I know. They average a little under 10 threes a game, made threes a game, and, um, you know, it, it wasn't one person, it, you know, RJ, you know, Pax, Seth, Cormac, just the awareness of where he was and, and making sure he didn't get an open look, and a couple times he did, but I just thought overall great team defense, physicality, um, we were talking on defense, we were engaged, and outside of those first two possessions in the, in the second half, I thought our rebounding was awesome. Yeah. Is this just a mentality this team is developing now? Because you got the last two games from the, all the talk that we've had about the lessons learned from earlier. Is this their developing mentality? Well, I mean, one of the things that we talk about for us to be successful is, you know, you have to win. And I talked to you guys about this before about winning the battle in the trenches. And that's, you know, the loose balls, the rebounds, the setting screens, making free throws especially down the stretch, you know, the discipline, the details have to be tight. And that's something that we practice, something that we talk about, something that we watch on film and hold ourselves accountable and things that we want to get better at and be consistent. And I feel like today we're really good at that. Hubert, these are two pretty hard-nosed road wins this week for you guys. Like they all are. <laughs> I, that, that's the thing for, I, I, you know, I've all I've known since, being alive is the ACC. I just feel like it's the best conference, you know, in college basketball. And home or on the road, it's just always a battle. And, um, you know, I think also, and I said this to you guys before, you know, the level and the variety of teams we played in the non-conference, I think, has helped us in situations like this on true road games to be in tight situations from the standpoint of, you know, in the non-conference, what we face, there's not much else we can't, you know, not much else we can see. <laughs> we basically saw a lot, almost everything. And so that gives us confidence that uh, that we can make plays on both ends of the floor. What does it say about your balance? You had at least 20 from RJ for eight consecutive games. At least two wins this week. You haven't needed that from you. No, we we need that from him. I, I'll take it. <laughs> it is. It It is. Well, this is a team. And... Um, <laughs> You know, you know, give you a great example. You know, Paxson Wojcik came in, and how many minutes did he have? Almost ten minutes. That three, that was huge for us in the second half. His defense on Gerard, um, Zayden came in, Jalen, uh, Jay Witt, Jay Wash. You know, guys coming off the bench are coming and making impactful plays for us to put ourselves in a position to be successful. So. Um, when R.J. Itton scoring 20, we have guys step up at the right time. Going back to the defense, Armando told us yesterday he was looking forward to the challenge of defending P.J. Hall today and all the different things that P.J. can do. What specifically did Armando do today to sort of get into Hall and keep him out of getting into any kind of a flow? Well, one of the things for not just for P.J., but um, for all of their bigs, they are they are great at like ducking in and sealing. And one of the things that we always talked about is you got to play defense before you play defense. And at this level, if you start playing defense when they got when your man gets the ball, it's just too late. And so I, I felt like before PJ and the post players were able to get position, they're looking for angles. I felt like um, Armando particularly did a really good job playing defense before playing defense, um, beating him to the spot and making P.J. catch the ball maybe one or two steps out further than where he wants it. Albert, how would you describe what you saw from your team in those final five minutes with being able to pull away and close the door? I do. I, it, it's fun. You know, I'm in the huddle, and, 
there's very, you know, very little that I'm saying. I'm just listening to them. And just uh, it's exactly what I have wanted. Um, the conversation in terms of, you know, what we're doing out there on the floor, where we need to go, what we need to be. I mean, they're, they're referencing things that we talked about in practice, situations that happen in practice. The guys behind the bench are, are going crazy as well. And it's just um, it's a really special and tight group. It's fun, fun to coach. Who are you hearing? Right then, here uh, in those shoot, oh, in oh, everybody, Cormac a lot, uh, Harrison, RJ, Armando a little bit, um, Seth a little bit, but uh, really everybody. And then Zayden talks a lot for behind the bench, and he's he's giving it to us, and um, just good conversation. I like that type of dialogue. And how important was it early uh, when RJ was slow to get going for you guys that Cormac and Ryan – uh, was really shooting the ball well in the first half and kind of kept that offensive consistency for you until those other guys got going. Yeah, it helped us. You know, we I, we felt fortunate and good at halftime to be tied. And, you know, we put them on a free throw line 15 times and, you know, RJ um, hadn't gotten a lot of open looks. I mean, this is the next level for RJ in terms of the way teams and defenses are playing against him. I mean, he leads the league in scoring. He's... I can't think of another guard in the country that's playing better than him. And so he's going to garner a lot of attention, and other guys have to step up, and Cormac did throughout the entire game, but specifically in the first half shooting the ball. A couple Hubert, more so we can get Clemson in here. Hubert, of course, uh, Cormac ended up finishing the game, but he did go down uh, for a second, had to check out. Do you know how he's doing right now? I think he's doing fine right now because, you know, the adrenaline. I, it'll be interesting to see what he feels like tomorrow. Um, but other than that, I don't know, but... That's just like Cormac to tie his shoelaces even tighter and get back out there on the floor. And that's such an inspiration um, to his teammates. You've read the 14-16 game for Armando is nothing new, obviously. But I don't know. It seems like he it seems like he's been bouncier the last couple of games, uh, for lack of a better term. Like, Are you seeing just more activity out of him? even at this stage in his career? Well, he was good today, you know, and, and, and you're right. He's working harder to get lower position down low on the paint. Um, it, it's just so big for us because not only can he score down there, you know, you got, you know, P.J. Hall fouled out, yeah. you know, so he gets he gets our team into, into the penalty. He opens up things from the outside and driving opportunities, and then when he's defending and rebounding like he is and staying out of foul trouble, um, it's a pretty impactful player, you know, and, and you, you mentioned that like he's this is his last year. He doesn't have uh, another year. This is it. And when you understand that this is it, you have maybe an awareness of wanting to leave and wanting to um, go out the right way. He's playing with a sense of urgency that um, that I love watching. How do you explain all the getting four let, let, this free last question? Brad's out there ready. How do you explain all the getting four free throws in the first half? I don't know. You know, uh, one of the things is, is you know, we've got to attack the basket. You know, and and you've got to be strong. You got to you got to you got to be strong through contact, and um, you got to be strong around the basket. I didn't feel like we were strong enough to get fouls in the first half, and in the second half, I felt like we were. Thanks, coach. Our players are available.